Hi guys, Amores here. Today we are going where no man has gone before and we are trying to install Windows 98 onto some Samsung NVMe SSD using some uh, pretty modern hardware. We already know from the last video that Windows 98 can handle a 13th gen Intel CPU, so right now the problem is not the CPU being too fast or everything else being too new, but the included screw for the M.2 slot is of course too short. Before buying something more specialized, we can borrow a uh, screw from a uh, retired GPU. It's not the first time when I do this and it should work uh, with this uh, 42mm M.2 drive. And of course it works. Now that we have our NVMe SSD secured, uh, can we install Windows 98 on it? We can try, we won't be able to use NVMe protocol and we are totally dependent on how uh, BIOS will make this drive available in the legacy mode. Either way, this is uncharted territory. There are lots uh, of videos about SATA SSD and Windows 98, but uh, nothing about NVMe. One of the reasons is that uh, older PCI Express motherboards are not NVMe aware. If we use an adapter to connect an M.2 NVMe drive to the PCI Express bus, our drive will be on its own. BIOS will uh, treat it like some other PCI device and not like a bootable drive. However, there are a few NVMe drives that have their own legacy boot ROM and can boot on all the motherboards the same way like a SCSI drive can do it. Samsung 950 Pro is known for this uh, feature. On NVMe ready motherboards like this one we are using right now, booting from an uh, NVMe drive is obviously not a problem, not even in a legacy mode. Once the CSM module is enabled, our NVMe drive can be used uh, not only in Windows but in DOS as well. If it works in DOS, then we should be able to install Windows 98, right? Well, I made a first attempt a while ago on my Ryzen 9 configuration using an uh, 8 data. S6-8200 Pro and uh, it ended with an I.O. error. This wasn't one of the usual Windows 98 installation errors, so I assume that you simply can't install uh, Windows 98 on uh, NVMe. Now let's give it another try. Uh, this time uh, not only that we have a different NVMe drive and hardware, but there is a plan B in case uh, installation uh, fails again. I guess uh, it's time to install Windows. For uh, this job we have to create a DOS bootable partition and we need Win98 folder from the installation CD, crack fix, a tiny patch that will take care of a Vcache Windows protection error. Patch mem by Rudolf Law is also required. During the installation, patch mem must be executed only once after we see this error screen about some invalid VXD dynamic link call. The rest of the installation is the same business as usual, but before we get there, we have to create a DOS bootable USB stick. For this job, we can use unit booting and a Windows 98 boot flop image from allbootdisks.com. Next, we have to create a DOS bootable partition. Right now, this NVMe drive has Windows 10 on it. It was installed just to test this NVIDIA 7900 GS driver compatibility. And this card works both in Windows 98 and in Windows 10 64-bit and should work in Windows 11 as well. We have to say goodbye to this Windows 10 installation because we must create a fresh FAT32 partition. Using this management tool is the fastest way to do it, but this approach requires another bootable drive with Windows, and uh, since we'll need to boot into DOS anyway, we'll partition this drive using FDisk from our DOS bootable USB stick. At this point, we pick our USB stick as a boot device, Unit booted will uh, kick in and uh, load the Windows 98 boot floppy image. And uh, now we can type fdisk. Now we have to create a primary FAT32 partition. We can't uh, perform this task without deleting the existing NTFS partitions. 
We can delete partitions pretty fast, but creating new ones is time-consuming because FDisk has to check drive integrity multiple times. First, when we start the process, then once again, when we choose the size of our partition. On a larger drive, it will take some time. Also, FDisk will be completely confused about our drive total capacity, but it will get the job done if we create partitions within FAT or FAT32 standard limits. Our partition was made active, so it's time to restart. From now on, BIOS knows where to check for the boot code, but at this moment there is nothing to load, so we have to boot one more time from the USB stick and run the format command. We are under DOS jurisdiction right now. Our primary partition is, of course, C drive. So typing format C followed by a sysc command will make our NVMe drive bootable. But this is not enough to start the Windows 98 installation. We need to copy hymem.sys and edit.com from the A drive. Also patchmem and crackfix from the B drive. Wait, uh, how come there is a B drive? Well. Uh, Unit Bootin will place the contents of the Windows 98 boot floppy under the A drive and the contents of the USB stick under the B drive. Now we have to put in charge HiMem Sys as memory manager and load the crack fix via auto exec bot. Once we are done, we can boot directly from our NVMe drive. Everything uh, checks out, our drive is bootable, and we can access more than one megabyte of memory thanks to HiMemsys. Our USB stick content is still available at the A drive. This is a nice touch of a modern BIOS. It also helps that my drive is FAT16 formatted. Now that we have copied the installation files somewhere on the C drive, we can finally start Windows 98 setup. Next, we have to use one of the oldest Windows 98 tricks, which became necessary since computers started to use more RAM than Windows 98 can handle. So right after the first restart, we are going to boot from our USB stick one more time and uh, we'll edit system ini, which is located into freshly created Windows folder. Here, right under 386 ENH section, we have to add max fields page equals 20,000. This line will limit the available RAM to 512 megabytes, but later, since we are going to use a patch mem by Rudolf Lowe anyway, we can use a higher number to get more RAM. And now we are getting ready to use Windows for the first time, or maybe not. Well, uh, this uh, error was expected and after a restart it's the right time to use patchmem and we are about to know if windows 98 can be installed directly on a nvme drive or maybe we better stick with uh, classic sata ssds which are still a better option as you can see the setup is at the next level and from now on, nothing can stop us from seeing Windows 98 desktop in 16 colors. So, it works, we can install Windows 98 directly on a NVMe drive, but obviously not using the NVMe protocol. Anyway, Windows 98 is okay with accessing the drive via basic BIOS commands, which is still something if we take in consideration what technologies are involved. Now let me show you how to install a PCI Express NVIDIA card on Windows 98. This won't be exactly a guide as requested, but more like some quick instructions. So, first we have to find the unofficial NVIDIA 8269 drivers. These drivers have their own instructions. In any case, if our card is not detected during the setup, which was the case with this uh, 7900GS uh, card, we have to install uh, the drivers manually. This time our card is properly detected and the driver will install. At first it might look that the card is working fine, we can access the control panel, even some games might start, but the system is unstable. On some other models we won't get this far because the card will uh, shut down itself. The good news is that these problems can be solved by installing some patches made by the very same Rudolf Law. There are detailed instructions included, so for now I won't go into other details, uh, since this video is more about NVMe. So let's go back to our main hero, the NVMe drive. Meanwhile, 
I connected a SATA drive, the SanDisk for 80 gigs uh, SSD featured in my last video. Then I ran some uh, benchmarks and the results are <laughs> pretty terrible. Let's be clear, the access time is fantastic. They are faster than regular ID drives that came pre-installed with Windows 98, but far from uh, their potential. This happens because uh, both drives are accessed by Windows using basic uh, BIOS commands and uh, Windows has to switch uh, to the real mode uh, while doing this. On a very fast computer like this with lots of RAM, it's not a big deal. Any potential slowdown is usually not noticeable. Anyway, our SATA drive can do way better than this because there are HCI drivers for Windows 98. And you'll never guess who made these uh, drivers. Yes, indeed, the very same Rudolf Law. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, so most likely we will never see a generic NVMe driver for Windows 98. To install the AHCI driver, we must locate our SATA controller into Device Manager and simply install the driver. But where is it? Well, for Windows 98, our SATA controller is just another PCI device. If we use a program like Hardware Info, we can identify what resources is using our controller and uh, compare uh, those uh, numbers with uh, what we can find uh, into Device Manager. In this case, our SATA controller must be the LO PCI card number 3. If we don't want to use this uh, method, we have to try these drivers with any unknown uh, PCI device. Depending on our hardware configuration, we should pick uh, four or six SATA ports. This motherboard has four ports. They will be installed uh, rather quickly, and after restart, we have an AHCI compatible Windows 98 configuration. This is pretty cool for Windows 98, if you ask me. And not only cool, but also fast. We have to restart, and then we can uh, benchmark again our SATA drive. I can assure you the numbers will be very different. And uh, let's not forget that once the AHCI drivers are installed, SATA DVD drives will uh, magically show up in Windows 98. Not to mention that this drive was connected since the very beginning, but optical SATA drives are not emulated by the BIOS, so they are not showing up unless we provide a driver. Now let's end the video with Sandra Sysoft 99 and uh, let's do another benchmark on our SATA drive. Well, uh, sequential read went from uh, 13 megabytes per second up to 247 megabytes. That's something. Not that we actually can feel this high transfer speeds while using Windows 98, but now we know that Windows is not relying on BIOS to access our drive. Meanwhile, our NVMe drive is still using the MS-DOS compatibility mode. There is nothing we can do about it. Now, I guess it's time to say goodbye. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video.